Hi, my name's Andrew. And I'm Katie. We're from Florida, and today we're outside of Seward, Alaska. This right here is the flak wagon. FL being Florida, AK being Alaska. We drove all the way from Key West to the end of the road in Homer, and here we are in Seward now. We uh, quit our jobs, <laughs> and we decided we wanted to travel for at least a year was our original plan, and not really knowing exactly what we were going to do up here, just just wanted to go for the adventure. So the trip up here mechanically went off without a hitch. We spent a lot of time and effort um, repairing or pre-repairing any wearable parts that could go out. Spark plugs, brake pads, rotors, leaf springs have been beefed up. Pretty much everything was prepared for the trip beforehand. Haven't had to make a single repair since then other than, you know, breaking a few hinges here and there, getting, <laughs> <laughs> yanking doors off. So this is our kitchen. This is where we do all of our cooking. We actually made these wood pieces to fit on the doors um, and I painted them and he did most of the woodwork. And on here we put some of our leftover vinyl countertop. countertop. It's the countertop from the interior that we had left over. This is our stove. Typically what we've been doing is we cook mainly dinner on this and and breakfast. We make coffee and bagels and things like that, pancakes. But for lunch, we try not to, it's just, it's hard to constantly use this cooking because it is it is a process. These are our propane tanks. It's just a standard camp yeah, stove. Yeah, standard camp yeah. stove. Nothing fancy, again, this was just a, a Coleman general camp stove. And we've actually been using the same stove for four or five months now. Yeah. Haven't had any problems with it, so we're really happy with that. We do cook inside. We just make sure these windows pop open. So we make sure those are open and there's a window in the back that opens as well. There's also um, a carbon monoxide detector immediately above the stove that yep. will go off should we yep. cause any fumes. Haven't had any issues cooking inside and we actually do cook inside a lot because of the rain. So when you're cooking outside in the rain, it's not. That much fun. <laughs> the wind more than the rain. And the wind too. Here, so it pulls out the stove. Another thing you'll notice we did on these boxes too, all the doors lay flat. This is extra workspace um, everywhere just to make it easier. Both of these cabinets fit right inside this door jam here. One thing with a van or any other tiny home, you want to make the most of any space that you have. So I saw dead space there. I needed a place to put a kitchen. There it is, and it folds up and goes away nicely. And then nicely. it gives us more storage. There's also space inside the doors here as well that's being utilized on both sides too. I mean, there's extra propane, olive oil, hoses. And behind this is all insulated as well. You can't really, you can't see it, but it makes it warmer. The whole van is insulated, really, really well insulated, starting from the bottom up. There's a half inch foam insulation, then there's half inch plywood, then there's vinyl floors. Mm -hmm. So why don't we move on in and we'll yeah. go Talk a little more about that. This was probably my greatest junkyard find. <laughs> <laughs> I found a sportsmobile in a junkyard and the guy didn't know what it was and he charged me $50 for the roof. It took me a long time to get off and it took me a longer time to get it on. A lot of things need to be repaired on it, and I give a lot of credit to the guys on the Sportsmobile Forum who gave me a lot of good advice on how to do exactly that, because there's only a handful of people outside of Sportsmobile that have installed one of these themselves, and that was a long process. And I was able to track down the factory that makes these canvases. We were able to get a new tent for it, because the old one was pretty weathered. It came off of the same 1994 that we got the doors from. Yep. And from that as well, we got the swivel seat here that turns around and we'll kind of work our way here now. Up here in the front, we also got the swivel seat off of that old sportsmobile, which gives us a lot of extra living space. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. A few other things to note up here, insulating curtain. One thing I would definitely recommend if you're doing van life, RV life, bus life, anything, blackout curtains because inevitably you're going to end up in a Walmart parking lot and you're going to want to black out your windows. So I made these inside as insulation and these are completely blackout curtains. So we snap them on. So we put these um, marine snaps onto the, the doors. You can see them all around and no one, no one can see in. You can't see out. It's completely, it's completely dark in Keeps here. Keeps us warmer too and cooler if we want to stay cooler. 
So this is my electrical control panel back here. There's a fuse panel that everything that runs off of 12 volt power goes through that fuse panel first. I have an inverter, 2000 watt inverter for charging appliances that don't accept 12 volt charging or running something like a blender or anything like that. I would say that having an inverter is not essential. It's a lot of money for one, but we do use it almost every day for smoothies. But almost every appliance that we have is 12 volt. The fridge is 12 volt, the fan's 12 volt, all the lighting is 12 volt LED. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get more 12 volt appliances, just look in the RV in the marine industry. They already exist. There are 12 volt blenders you can buy if you want a dedicated 12 volt blender. There's a couple switches here you can notice as well. This top one turns the solar on and off. It always stays on. It doesn't always work so great up here, but the bottom switch connects this onboard battery bank to the alternator. So if we're going on a long drive, I can charge these batteries with the engine while we're running. Always have to be very considerate to turn it back off when we stop though, so we don't drain the van battery because it doesn't have a one-way voltage sensitive relay. We probably, maybe once every other day, we'll charge the batteries with the engine. However, it does take a long time to charge the batteries all the way up. Whenever we can, we plug in the van and top the batteries up and get like a true full charge. And we have to do that probably, unfortunately, almost every other day while we're here. Otherwise, the fridge shuts off. And I've kind of been tweaking the fridge where We'll turn the fridge on only at night and through the day it just acts like a cooler that keeps everything cool we we'll monitor the temperature of it if it gets above you know upper 40s 50 degrees we'll turn it on or i'll run the van for a little bit get it going so yeah. the top uh degrees is the fridge and then this is outside it's real time we keep track of it yep and if it's too hot if it or gets... too cold even it yeah. happens sometimes you leave the fridge running too long and it gets down to yeah. 25 <laughs> degrees your stuff freezes installing onboard propane is very expensive has to be done by a licensed propane installer and i couldn't get it done for less than I, the quotes were like fifteen hundred two thousand dollars for onboard propane you can buy propane kits for vehicles but even a new propane a vehicle ready propane tank is going to cost four or five hundred dollars and then you still have to do it yourself and moving vehicle with propane tank that I installed myself is kind of one of those things where I need to draw a line somewhere. You know, I'll do electrical work, I'll do 12 volt appliances, I'll cut holes in the van, but endangering our safety yeah. is not something that I'm going to do. The charge controllers back there too, the 12 volt remote switch is back there as well. I ran everything through this part of the kitchen unit here before installing it. And that was another thing I did. I pre-ran a lot of my wires. You know, before I put the wall up, I ran wires for things I knew I was going to need. And then I ran extra wires for things I didn't know I was going to need until I needed them later. So there's, there's three different types of insulation in this van. The first layer is Reflectix, which is the foiled bubble wrap. And that went directly against the wall. In larger gaps, we put fiberglass insulation. Something you need to be very careful about with fiberglass insulation is it absorbs moisture. So if you're heating your van or cooking in your van, it could get wet and it could be a sponge that's going to rust your van from the inside out. All the fiberglass in here is bagged, so it will not absorb moisture. A vapor barrier is another way to prevent moisture from absorbing into your fiberglass. And then on top of that, there's slats that run the length of the van. And in between each of those slats is the foil backed foam, three quarter inch foil backed foam. And the van stays pretty toasty mm -hmm. with the pop top down. We don't lose a lot of heat, especially with the curtains up. We did a lot better before we did the pop top because the pop top is a fiberglass roof with just a thin piece of the Reflectix inside of it. So that did decrease mm -hmm. our R value quite a bit. And we do have a little buddy heater if we need. Very rarely do we have to use the buddy heater. It's nice every now and then. But we can always just turn on the van and turn on the heat and it does heat up back here pretty Heats well. Heats up really fast. And then it kind of retains that heat. We've so only nice. we've only used it maybe once or twice, I'm three almost, times. Now that we're talking about it, I'm thinking about it, why do we even have it? <laughs> I know. So moving this way around the van, this is our kitchen unit. We built this as well. I was very fortunate. Katie's dad was really nice to me and 
builds pool tables and hotel furniture and mm -hmm. let me step into his workshop for an afternoon. Crank this thing out in and, six hours. Yep. <laughs> and everything else took so long. I mean, yep. <laughs> just like these boards. I have tools to get, you know, general woodworking done. He had the machinery that we needed to make a nice clean cut on large pieces of plywood. And then we painted it, we antiqued it, we glazed it, a laminate countertop and cut the sink into it. And it's purpose built. It's built to fit exactly the layout that we wanted. It contours to the back of the van so there's not any large gaps in it. The fridge fits perfectly. We have a little freezer in here as well. I would love a bigger fridge because we find ourselves growing to the grocery store once, once every week. It adds up because instead of buying in bulk, which is ends up being cheaper, you have to buy um, less and you end up spending more, if that makes sense. Whereas if you go to Costco, you can get really cheap things. But we do have these storage units and these also contain food as well. And then we kind of limit ourselves on the refrigerator because it does sometimes get up in the 50s. So Down here we have some general storage as well too. And these are where the batteries are. These are this, the six volt. They are lead acid batteries. So one thing with lead acid is they can't tip over, they'll leak and they need to be ventilated or they'll give off potentially flammable or toxic gas. Fortunately with the fridge and the vents back there that ventilates them enough, that's okay. Um, I did put them in battery boxes as well, just in case of something sloshing around. Uh, and then we have just general cleaning supplies down there and inside here as well, this is where our water tank lives. And this is another scenario where I built a water tank or bought a water tank that fits perfectly inside the kitchen. And I had the fridge and I knew which water tank I was gonna get and I had the batteries before I built this kitchen unit and the sink as well. So I knew exactly what size this thing needed to be. And the 16 gallons doesn't sound like a whole lot, but that's enough to last us easily three days for cooking, probably five, washing. I, like I mean, we've least. probably gone a week on just that water tank alone. Just try to be considerate washing dishes. So we usually fill up the sink maybe halfway and then we try to conserve water that way instead of leaving the sink running. We don't leave the sink running brushing our teeth and it's just, it's kind of eye-opening. You realize how much water you use. And it runs on a 12 volt pump as well. And this is just an RV water tank pump. I have it on a switch. So we turn the pump off when we're done and that's important because should you spring a leak, you don't want your pump to cycle out all your water into your van or bus. So these two are lights and this one is a porch light that's out there and the other two are just open right now in case I want to wire something else later. We also have a remote switch for turning on the inverter and then 12 volt charging station. And we have one of those over here as well where we charge our phones. Yep, USB charging station on the other side. I should show them what I'm sitting on. So this is not <laughs> only a nice fancy seat or footrest, but uh, this is where we do our business. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a simple, um, you know, self-contained toilet, and it is really not as nasty as it sounds. Yeah. This is for number one only, please. <laughs> um, but it really is simple to take apart, and it's, it's, you don't have to get your hands dirty doing it. You just carry that tank to any toilet and dump it in, push a button, and then you're off. And that's it. So that thing has actually been really, really handy. It's nice to have your own bathroom in here when you need it. Yeah. So a lot of the times we just camp where there's no bathroom. I mean, a lot of the times we camp off the grid, I would yeah. say. Here. Well, if we're out in the woods, I'll go to the bathroom in the woods. But if we're in a city, city somewhere yeah. and there's not a bathroom immediately available, this is nice to have. So this is our bed. It is in couch mode right now. So this does fold out and lock into this channel right here. And we built the frame ourselves. So the frame is just wood frame. Um, and underneath is storage. So when we um, slide this all the way and we bring this piece of mattress up, we can lift up the storage unit. In our storage there, we have a lot of emergency foods, uh, just in case we were driving on the Alcan, so we were worried that maybe we would get stuck um, for a long period of time. Luckily, it didn't, didn't happen. In there is also a lot of our winter gear. 
Uh, so things we don't need necessarily right now, um, and we'll put our summer gear in there when we switch to winter. We did spend a lot of time picking out the bed because this is our bed. It's not just, we're not just camping in this for the weekend. We are sleeping in this every night, so we, we needed it to be comfortable for us. But what we did was we cut it with a turkey carver, <laughs> and then we, we had to make these sheets custom. We did buy sheets, and then we had to cut them, re-sew them to fit our new mattress cut in half. We have a lot of canned goods, so we, we basically rotate our meals. We eat Mexican food, so we do tacos, burritos, so things like beans, rice, um, vegetables, and tortillas, tortilla chips, avocados, and then we do pasta, and then we, we do something else. We don't really get fancy with our cooking because we, we don't have an oven and we don't have much storage. But it's worked out pretty good so far. <laughs> we eat well. <laughs> Tell them the truth. What? Tell them that you're vegan. Oh yes, I'm vegan too. So yep, I'm, I'm a vegan, he's a meat eater. So uh, it's a little interesting cooking for the both of us, but we make it work. This is our closet. This is all of our clothes, all the clothes that we use. So I had to downsize a lot on my closet. These two are mine. These two are his. And then down here we have um, toiletries, medicine, and then we have our electronics all in here. And then we have bookshelves. So both of these back here are bookshelves and then back here is our towels. So yeah, we had to downsize a lot of our possessions. Um, we sold a lot of things, um, donated a lot of things. I went through my closet and just, so there's a lot of things you just don't need. That's what we found. It's pretty freeing actually to get rid of um, material goods. So this is something that I would definitely change that I want to change <laughs> maybe over the winter because, you know, our stuff is just all visible and I would, I would rather it be in a closed space. That way things don't come falling out, which if you pack it in well, it won't. But there is times where we go over a bump and just everything falls out. <laughs> and I'm back here picking up the pieces, but it's, it has worked out, but I would definitely want a cabinet system. So this is a sportsmobile penthouse. I would not recommend that anybody install one of these in their selves. It's an extremely complicated system and there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of dangerous moving parts here too. There's a, there's a spring here that extends to almost six feet long and it's loaded with about a thousand pounds of tension when it's all the way extended. These scissor bars come down and it preloads the spring to aid you in popping it up and it's supposed to spring it all the way up. However, with the added weight of solar panels on top, um, it doesn't work quite as well as I'd hoped. This is another thing that I'm really glad we put it on the van. However, if I could do this again, I would buy a van that I could walk into and stand up in naturally without having to pop it up or lower it down every time we wanted to go somewhere. It is nicer because it keeps our center of gravity really low. Um, reduced wind resistance, better gas mileage, all those things. But I would enjoy the luxury of being able to just naturally stand and walk around. And this was probably the most complicated, this was the most complicated and time consuming thing we did to the van. It, I mean, cutting the roof off was very intimidating. <laughs> I used a, a circular saw, believe it or not, with a sheet metal blade and it cut through the roof like butter. That was actually really easy to do, but getting the measurements exactly right and it was, it was very nerve wracking because I only had one roof and once I cut it off, that was it. There's no going back. So I had no room for error and having never done one of these before, I was very hesitant to do it. And the penthouse actually sat in my backyard for mm. six months and I was just going to get rid of it because I didn't want to do it until I got um, Probably I got me. brave enough to actually do it. And, <laughs> I kept pushing you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm very fortunate. Again, I mentioned the sportsmobile form. If you're thinking about doing a van conversion, not just a sportsmobile, there's a lot of general van conversion information on there. And the guys on that form are like engineering type mindset. And they're going to hold you to a really, really high standard. It's hard to make them happy. But if you do, then you know you're doing a good job. And I, and I really strive to do that. And I made a lot of improvements to the penthouse as well. You know, just upgrading the bolts, the nylon system here. Um, I put metal bars inside these metal bars because they were starting to bow and I didn't want that to happen. 
uh, redid all the trim work here, re-insulated it, put the Raptor liner on the roof, new rubber seals. Reupholstered these things that were all felt of it blue was replaced. And... Yeah. This is one thing everybody should do. You should have a fan in your van because on those nights when you're Walmart camping, you're gonna want a little airflow maybe, and this is awesome. Um, and this is just a simple crank up fan and then three speeds. This is another one of those things. I plugged into my 12 volt remote, so if I wanna turn it off, I can turn it off with the remote without having to get out of bed. So before I started the build, I wanted to fix everything that was wrong with the van and things that I could potentially see going wrong with the van. And I had this really strange fear of rust. So I rubber lined the entire floor of the van with truck bed liner before doing anything else. Anything that was rusty or any holes that were anywhere, I bonded them, I primered them, and then we, and then we rubber lined them. And then we did the insulation and then the plywood sheets that are cut to fit. And then this floor is actually laminate flooring, comes in um, a big sheet. Oh, it might be, might be vinyl actually. But anyways, it was a sheet and I wanted to get the sheet that was like the fake, um, fake hardwood because it's waterproof. I mean, it's a solid sheet. So if you spill anything on it, it's not gonna go through the cracks anywhere. So you could sweep it out. You know, if you get in a car accident, bang your head a little bit, there's blood on the floor, not a big deal. Just, <laughs> just wipe it out. <laughs> so there's a half inch of insulation and then there's a half inch of plywood and then the laminates on top of that. So that gave us uh, about an inch uh, in change over top of this here. So put a little aluminum L bracket to cover it up, hide the seams, and then we put sealant and all that too. So it's pretty watertight. I'm not really worried about water getting underneath it anywhere. And I did the rubber lining all the way to the front of the van just to make sure there was no rust. So the exterior is one of the first things people notice and they ask questions about, probably more than anything, is what kind of paint is this? And this is Raptor. On the top, the black is, this is a truck bed coating made by a company called Upol. It's a do-it-yourself kit. It's an epoxy two-part kit. They give you the gun in the kit and you can spray it on with just an air compressor. And it's tintable to any color. So I picked out this whitish grayish color and tinted it myself in my backyard, waited for a clear day, did all my prep work, just went to town. It turned out great. You know, I didn't intend on doing the whole van first. Um, I did the roof initially and got some bad wind. And the black <laughs> got all over the regular paint and we could not get it off. We tried everything, every synthetic, or uh, every solvent, every yeah. type of like synthetic acetone. cleaner, acetone, it would not come off. So I was thinking if it's that hard to get off, let's just do the whole van. And we did. And this is what we end up with. And it's got, it's not a bad texture. Definitely adds some uh, noise reduction to the van itself. Salt protection as well from rocks. And I've even heard some people joke that it creates like a golf ball dimple effect and gives you better air resistance. So <laughs> <laughs> better gas mileage. Harder to scratch. Yeah. Yep. These are BF Goodrich all-terrains. I've gone through a lot of all-terrain tires in my lifetime, done some mild off-roading and some mudding in Florida. In my opinion, this is the best true all-terrain tire that runs really well on the highway. It doesn't make a lot of noise and it's not too hard on the wallet either. And the rims were, yeah, those were just an upgrade. I didn't really need them, but it does give me extra width with the tire. So I was able to get a little more track on the tire. That's the only benefit for that. And starting from the bottom too, the whole suspension of the van has been rebuilt. I beefed up the leaf springs, added an extra leaf. I've added a rear sway bar to help with the weight of the camper from shaking back and forth. Bilstein shocks all the way around upgraded coil springs up front, and I replaced all the ball joints, the tie rod ends, all the bushings I replaced with polyurethane. We can kind of move up that way a little bit. I replaced the front brakes with power stop brakes and rotors, the heavy duty ones, because we've got, you know, what was an empty 5,000 pound-ish van is now probably 8,000 pounds, so you got a lot of extra weight. I really wanted that stopping power going downhill. And they're slotted rotors as well, so they don't overheat quite as easily. This is a two-wheel drive. As much as I think 4x4 is awesome, this is our home. We live in this. I do not want to put my house, our house, in a position where we need 4x4 to get it out. 
So Although we have been in some interesting situations. That's the other thing too. We've <laughs> driven to Alaska with a two-wheel drive vehicle with an open differential, I'll add. Going up mountains. Up mountains, places we should not have been in a two-wheel drive vehicle. <laughs> and I've never once had an issue with slipping or traction or wished I had four-wheel drive. We brought up a motorcycle and it's a shame it's not on here right now because this is my motorcycle rack and it holds a Yamaha TW200. It's a small dual sport motorcycle, street legal, so we can take it anywhere. And it rode the whole way on the front of the van on the Alcan. This is just a standard tow hitch that I put up front originally. And right away I realized that the motorcycle rack was gonna sit way, way too low and it was gonna reduce my approach angle to any hills or even a speed bump to almost nothing. So I put an eight inch riser on it, first of all, and then put the rack on it. And all of these, the rack is weighted for 500 pounds, carrying capacity, the drop or rise hitch is rated for just the same as well. So we haven't had any issues with this, surprisingly either. That went off well. One thing that was an issue was visibility with headlights. The motorcycle blocked the headlights. So that created a whole nother problem. And I had to get snowplow headlights put those on there wired them in got some extra leds kind of crudely wired them in i didn't do anything too crazy just some simple relays i did have to do a little bit of welding i mean i made the grill out of an old rv tow kit for towing a car i didn't do any heavy fabricating i just modified things that already closely fit what i needed them to do one thing that is a little bit of a bummer about these ford vans is the headlights really aren't that great they don't put out a ton of light so going off road or back trails, it's really nice to have a lot of light, especially if you're getting off the highway late at night, you're tired, yeah. you're trying to find a place to camp going out. Going down a dirt road. We've used it a number of times. Great for wildlife spotting too. Actually, when we are driving on a dirt road, you can see coyotes mm -hmm. or foxes much, much further off. We do have solar panels as well. So these are 160 watt panels. There's two of them. So we have a 320 watt system and it runs into a 40 amp multi-point power tracking charge controller, an MPPT, which is the most efficient type of charge controller you can get. From there, we actually run it into two six volt golf cart batteries. And I've wired them together to make a big 12 volt battery, 100, or 225 amp hours. And that battery powers everything in the van. <clears throat> the fridge, the lights. Water pump. The water pump the blender for making smoothies. <laughs> <laughs> Everything runs off of those batteries. They're really efficient. So I had to pay a little bit of extra money to get the wattage I wanted in the smaller package that was gonna fit on the roof and be light enough to work. They are <laughs> mounted onto a track system that is designed for Yakima uh, roof rack. This is another example of me modifying something slightly that already serves a purpose and just made some bolts that, that go right into the track. And it's adjustable too, so if I needed to slide the solar panels forward or backwards, we could, or remove them entirely, that's also possible. So we have here a swing out bike rack. I got this on Craigslist. I got most of the stuff on Craigslist. <laughs> I, I, I was, we've been planning on doing this for so long that gave us an advantage of being able to buy things used and be patient and just wait for something that we know we're gonna need and buy it when we see a good deal. And I think I paid $100 for this bike rack and its MSRP was like $550. Same thing for the motorcycle mount up front. I think I paid 150 bucks for it, regularly 500. Mm -hmm. So if you're patient and you know you're gonna build a van or you know you're gonna do this, go garage sailing, look on Craigslist, Go on eBay, there's deals to be had. Go to the junkyard, I love the junkyard. <laughs> he loves the junkyard. <laughs> Spent many hours there. We're from Florida, so the mountains is very new to us. So we, we have done some off-road trails, but I'm not as comfortable as he is on a bike, so I'm, I'm still learning. We're trying it out. So there was a few things that I wanted to make sure to do with the van, like as far as requirements. I wanted to be able to use all the doors at any time that I wanted to. So nothing could be permanently blocked or had to be like dismounted to access anything. That's why the motorcycle's on the front and not the back. Cause if it was on the back, I'd have to unload it every time I wanted to open these doors. So the swing out hitch is really nice for that. This is, this actually mounts onto the hitch here. I did weld this additional support bracket here just to give it a little extra, um, kind of counter that leverage. Cause it does, it's a lot of weight and it hangs out pretty far. 
just to be putting all that torsion on that one point there. So that helps stabilize the whole system. So there's a few other little features of the van as well. I bought a 12 volt remote system and I wired up various things to it. So we have a little porch light here on the back that, and this is a simple Amazon $15 kit. It's not hard to do. You just have to wire any 12 volt appliance into it. Our fan is wired into it. There's another interior light wired into it and this rear light. I have one extra just in case I decide something else. It's not the very pretty side of the van. But... No, this is the, uh, <laughs> this is the rear this end. This is the garage. <laughs> <laughs> you want to show them the shower? Yeah, so this is our shower system, which surprisingly we have not used much because we only have 16 gallons on board of water. So this goes very quick. So now we have a shower. I'll turn it on real quick. Yep. And we have used it only a couple times. Thanks. Bathing suit, yeah. We really don't use this as often as you might think. Kind of our go-to shower is baby wipes. <laughs> baby, <laughs> baby wipes, wipes are used us. more often than not. Yeah, um, and we also have a, a gym membership. Um, so along the way, we are able to use showers. Gym memberships are really helpful. So it's not a lot of water pressure anyways. And we find that with 16 gallons on board, that if we were to shower every day we'd be out of water every two days especially with all you know if it's hot you're drinking a lot of water depending on what we're cooking we cook most of our meals ourselves we very rarely eat out and then washing dishes too uses a yep, lot of water it does this is our water fill so all you do is unscrew the cap and then we have a filter hose and so we hook it up to any what is it drinkable any potable water any potable source water. it's only a tank on board there's no live pressure system we built the van to exclusively camp off the grid so there was never any intention to be at a campsite mm -hmm. and i think we've only camped or paid to camp at campsites in yellowstone glacier national park basically all Banff, the national parks and denali Where you, there's you no other way to do it to. yeah and inside before the tank makes it to the sink. There's a really fancy 3M water filter, filters out lead, contaminants, anything you don't want to drink. So I would feel comfortable drinking lake water if I had to. <laughs> Her, maybe not so much. But also over here we have a um, power input. So in addition to having the solar panels, there's a 12 volt battery charger in here as well that will top up the batteries. And I've done a few things with this plug. I mean, it goes to the battery charger. It also goes to the fridge. This is the rear of the fridge here, and it's a three-way fridge. So it can run off a of 12 volt power, or it can run off a of 110, and I'll, I'll flip the switch and it'll run off of the plug. So that helps the batteries charge and stay healthy that way. The fridge also does run off of propane, but I don't have it hooked up to do that. We have no onboard propane system, yeah. but we do cook with propane. So we had to do these all as well. We had to cut the van. So I got this fridge um, from a neighbor of mine, a refurbished fridge out of an old 1986 pop-up camper. And this is again, being frugal. I knew I needed a fridge in 12 volt or three-way fridges, brand new of almost any size are like $600. I was patient, I waited, I was looking around, looking around, 40 bucks right here, and it works. It's not the most efficient machine on the market, and this is probably one of my biggest gripes currently about the van. It is using a technology, I believe it's called absorption technology. So any fridge that uses propane is really, really efficient with propane, but not so efficient with 12 volt or 110 power. And this is the biggest tax on our battery is the refrigerator. And depending on where we are, it's a catch-22 sometimes. Here in Alaska, the weather's colder, so it doesn't take as much energy to heat the fridge. However, There's I no haven't sun. seen the sun <laughs> except a handful of times this summer. Um, but in Florida, where we're from, for example, we get tons and tons of sunshine, but it's so hot that it's hard for the fridge to keep up with it. This is one of the things, if I could change something about the van, I would buy a dedicated 12-volt slash 110 fridge, a two-way fridge that uses, uh, I forget the name of the, the technology, but it's, it's newer, it's much, much more efficient than a three-way fridge. I think it saves you like 10 times the power. You're gonna draw half an amp as opposed to drawing five, maybe 10 amps. $20 out of a junkyard and it's double paned, tempered glass and it slides open and there's a screen on it as well that slides open. Unfortunately, 
we have a leak somewhere. Nothing's leaking inside the vehicle, which is good news, but only in the window. Inside this window, we've got some moisture buildup, and I'm not sure where it's coming from. It's performed great so far, and we haven't had any other issues with it, so I'm generally happy with it. Well, and tell them about how this was meant for a straight surface, but we put it on a curved, so we had to. <laughs> okay, yeah, so. If you're going to install aftermarket windows on a van, one thing you need to be very considerate of is vans are curved. Most of them are anyways. The older, some of the older vans are less curved, some of the Sprinters are straight. If you get a window that's built for a trailer or an RV, they are not curved at all. So if you get one that's very tall in the vertical direction, you might have a gap of half an inch at the top or bottom. So you need to be very considerate of that. This one was not so much, like I could barely fit a penny underneath the top or bottom. This is Dicor RV window sealant on it. Really excellent stuff. I've used probably two or three tubes of it around the van, just sealing everything. And I haven't had water get into the van anywhere, you know, on the roof, on the sides, through this stuff. And it's really been great so far. The reason I bought a Ford van, this particular model, is because the body and the frame is the same from 1992 to 2013. So that gives you 21 years of parts to scavenge through. It's the most common van manufactured in North America. Anywhere in the country and in Canada, and even here in Alaska, you're gonna be able to get parts, which is what I wanted because mm -hmm. inevitably things do break and you need to be able to fix them. What's really cool about it is this van is a 2006 and I'll show you here, I wanted power windows and I did not have <laughs> power windows on this van. And I found power windows off of a 1994 in the junkyard. So you can see the different colored door. They were blue. <laughs> they were blue. <laughs> they were really blue. The power window guts were inside the door. So I took the door and I literally unbolted the old one and bolted this one right back up. So you're talking about a van that was made 12 years prior and it was a bolt-on application. And even these door panels, this door panel came off of a 2013 and it fit on the 1994 door, which is really great. Common usage of parts there. Um, Should I show them how it rolls down? <laughs> Cause it's kind of interesting. You can yeah, show them how it rolls down. I didn't get the door panels with the original door. They were destroyed and I had to wire up <laughs> a new door motor relay system. Up in here, you can kind of see Katie's using, I built just out of a plastic box. And again, I got this on Amazon, paid like six bucks for it. It's just a little computer or electronics control box. Put some switches in and wired up my snowplow headlights the LED light bar, the other LED lights, and both the windows are wired into that little box as well. Also up there, there's a switch that controls the backup camera, which is inside the rear view mirror. So it's another fancy hidden backup camera system. And that was really simple to install too. You just swap out the old mirror, uh, run mm -hmm. power to it, and then hook it up to the camera in the back. And that wasn't even that expensive either. I think with the camera, it was $150. Amazon, Amazon as well. Yeah. Yep. Amazon was one of my other go-to places for getting supplies and doing research. And with Prime, I mean, I could get things delivered to my house almost faster than I could go out to the store and spend time doing mm -hmm. it. Because a trip to the hardware store, we probably took three trips to the hardware store a week. Yep. And a 30 minute trip <laughs> turns into a four and a half hour trip almost every single time. And I am exhausted when I'm done shopping at the hardware oh, he store. Loves it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, his favorite place. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, it's tough though, shopping yeah. all the time. So any chance I could save ourselves a trip to the hardware store, we did. And a few other things you'll notice up here. I mean, the roof, we, yeah, did, we a, did all of this. We put a new headliner on it just to give it a little custom color, make it feel more homey. We repainted a few things. The plastic on the center console was a little worn, so we freshened it up with some Krylon plastic paint. Carpet on the dash, floor mats. Uh, I think those were both Amazon as well, and they're cut to fit already, so we didn't have to do any custom work on mm -hmm. them. That saved us a lot of time. The doghouse pops right out, and I can change the spark plugs. I did change the spark plugs from inside the van. Doesn't mean it was comfortable. I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> it actually hurt quite a bit, but yeah. some of them were easy to reach anyways. Thanks for watching our video. Uh, you can check us out on Instagram, Flack Wagon. F-L-A-K-W-A-G-O-N. So Florida to Alaska. And that's how the name came about. Yep. And it fits it pretty well because it is a rugged beast that has gotten us all the way here. And I'm really happy with it.
Thanks yeah, again. Thank you.